fashion besties. Boy, do I have a treat for you today. On the Fashion Crimes podcast, we have such an important celebrity that has graced us with her presence. I am beside myself. We have not only one of the most popular YouTubers, one of the most popular and well-seasoned senior fitness instructors, beginner exercise trainers, master instructor and choreographer, Miss Jenny Fitstart McClendon. Welcome to the show, Jenny. Yay. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. This podcast Woo! is amazing. Okay, y'all. Jenny and I have been best friends since sixth grade. Duh. Okay. Uh, let's get clear. Um, let's get real. We're doing a little cross promotion. Um, I was lucky enough to star, I like to say guest star, um, in one of her partner exercise videos. And that was super fun. Then we did some TikToks and that was really fun. So she promoted that. What did your people say? Did they say anything? I mean, they loved it. They did? Yeah, they loved it. They thought it was really cute that they saw me with like one of my friends. I'm not sure they've ever seen me in that like that area. But um, yes, they loved it. I got lots of great comments. So. Okay, good. It was um, super I fun. Because after the, the, it was only 15 minute video and I was like, what'd they say? What'd your people say? She goes, oh, I don't know yet. I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh my I God. Know. I did check it. It was awesome. Yeah. Okay. Then at the end of the video, she did, did a slideshow um, of us from our sixth grade pictures and then our reincarnated pictures from today. Epic. I mean, what? Like that's weird. I mean, I'm sorry that we recreated all of our pictures from the, our sixth grade beach trip. Just I mean, saying. And um, definitely anyway, want to look at them. Jenny, tell us a little bit about your career who you are, what you do, and what makes you the expert. Because this week, Fashion Besties, we are talking about the do's and don'ts of exercise, clothing, dressing, shoes, and accessories. And who better than Jenny Fitstar? Jenny, hit it. Hit it. Well, look, I live in fitness clothes. I mean, 24 seven, but my background is, um, I was just always really, really active growing up as you know. And, um, I did like competitive gymnastics until I was about 15, 16. And that really just led into that craze of aerobics. I still call it aerobics. <laughs> um, but, and, um, I started teaching fitness classes when I was 17 and I, still teach classes. I am also a licensed physical therapist and I've, I literally went to PT school so that I wouldn't be stuck in a gym teaching classes, but I have just circled back around. I still teach. I think that's just where my love is. And then over the pandemic, I got really nervous of all my people that were at home, not taking my classes. So I just started putting videos on YouTube over the pandemic. And um, I did a lot of them. I did them every week and it just kind of blew up. Um, I mean, I think we were going towards virtual fitness anyway, but I think the pandemic sped it up five years. So now that is my full-time job, uh, Jenny Fit Start. It's just a YouTube channel for active seniors and beginners. That's kind of my love. And I do everything on there from, you know, physical therapy type themed injury rehab type workouts to um, seated workouts, to yoga, to line dancing, anything that they want, I am there to give. And so it's great being able to do that, working out at home and uh, look, you know, things happen for a reason. It's just been very joyful. Definitely my favorite job I've ever had. So I will speak for you and say that when you got married, y'all joined a certain church and then you started teaching the class you were teaching at the church. Was it always older people or was it a mix or what was? Cause I, this, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I did like three different classes. So I did, I did boot camps for people like you and me. And then I did some for preschool teachers. Uh, but my most popular one was for the active older generation. And that was called fit over 50. And I personally taught that class for 16 years. And that's definitely where, I mean, I had that love of, you know, that age group because they really are kind of inspiring, you know, and they care. Them. Oh my gosh. And they're lovely. And, you know, we just have a lot of fun and they'll just do whatever I tell them to do. And they think it's really fun and funny. So, um, you know, I just, you know, when you're 
when you get older, your, your life feels um, like really small because you don't go out as much anymore and you don't um, see the people that you used to see and you don't travel as much as you do. And so I feel like when I bring them together, it just makes their life feel a little bit bigger and they're able to do things maybe they didn't think they could do. And that's fun for me. I love that. And then as y'all are getting to know Jenny, um, you know, there's, she's very type A and very organized. So it's like when she teaches a class, it's a new routine or adding on to a routine and the music is very curated and the moves are very curated and she knows everyone on a personal level. And then she does an, a potluck at the end to say goodbye before the summer. And then she starts it again. It's just a very curated program. And so that's why she's got these incredible followers. I want to talk about two different buckets. I want to talk about our age group and your mm -hmm. aging population. Mm -hmm. So here at the Fashion Crimes Podcast Beat Laboratory, that's what I like to call it. You know, I always talk about fashion advice, style advice, do this, don't do that, buy this, buy from this small brand, you know, expand life beyond the mall. Exercise clothing has been something, something that my people have been asking me about what brands, how do you do this? How do you style that? What if I'm losing weight? What about sports bras? Let's talk about you as a student, you know, you go or you work out, you do your own workout, you do a video, you do what you know what to do. What have been some do's and don'ts? I can definitely tell you some do's and don'ts of mistakes that I've made in workout clothes. What to you consists of a, a cohesive workout outfit to support whatever you're doing with weightlifting, running, whatever? Yeah. Um, so for me personally, I, I, I think about the activity I, I'm getting ready to do. Um, the most important thing, and I think you would agree, even with your regular clothes is the sports bra. I mean, that's the number one most important thing. Um, and it's kind of like making sure that it's just so supportive. I mean, if we're running and bouncing around, we don't need those things flying everywhere. We want to keep them supported. So the number one thing um, is I have an array of sports bras and I just tend to go with uh, maximum impact because I don't want them moving at all, right? So when uh, you talk, tell us about, is it, does it look like a bra? Does it look like this, the ones that I'm wearing? Which, what do, what does yours look like that you're I mean, um, typically I like um, the, the tee back and I like a higher neck a little bit. Um, but I go for, um, usually ones that clasp in the back, um, mm -hmm. but I'm not loyal to any kinds when, look, when I try on sports bras, I, it's like a day and I, oh yeah. And it's like trying on bathing suits and I'll be in there sweating and but look, <laughs> when I find one that I like, you know, I'll buy several of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't need to be super cute with my sports bras. I mean, I literally saw this girl at the gym. They have the ones that are like off the shoulder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I don't Yeah, I could never wear like, that. Like what in the universe? I mean, yeah. it looks cute. It looks yeah. super cute. But how in the world do you work out in that? Um, so I start there and then I think about what um, activity I'm doing. So when I'm outside running, walking, tennis, I, I personally like loose fitted shorts um, but you know, I, I got to think about what I'm doing in the gym before I go. So if I'm doing yoga, I want to make sure that I'm wearing my, um, leggings that are tight and a tight fitted shirt, because with all the down dogs, I mean, your shirt's going to just be flying up in the air. So, and then for me, I like to be a little bit more covered than some people, but I feel more comfortable that way. So I just feel like when I'm comfortable at the gym I, and I look good at the gym, then my confidence levels up and then I'm going to perform a little better at the gym. So you're not going to find me in the gym in an old ratty t-shirt and ratty shorts. Um, you know, I, I like to as silly as it sounds, but I, I like to look put together at the gym. Me too. Um, Me too. Yeah. And, and, and really it's because I live at the gym and this is where people see me. Correct. I mean, right. And if they're going to see, if I'm, if that's the only place they're going to see me. I do want to look somewhat decent. Um, so I just make sure I have really comfortable fitted clothes that I like. Um, so with leggings, I mean, I have a specific brand that I'm abs. I don't know if I've turned you onto these Holly, but, um, 
It's a brand called Zaya, and they are pretty much known for all activewear. But the one thing I always get from them are the light and tight compression leggings. And they have like the wide um, waistband. So it's not going to roll down because that's my biggest pet peeve. I hate that. God, like the rolling down of the leggings. And I don't want to constantly be pulling them up for sure when I'm teaching, that's so annoying. Um, and so I have a hundred pairs of these light and tight compression leggings and they come in all different lengths, which I love. So I have pretty short legs. So I tend to go with the cropped. I think that looks better on me. And then um, t-shirts or tank tops, I go for things that are just a little bit breathable. Um, nothing like cotton, something with a little bit of spandex and polyester blend so that it doesn't get stinky and that it's not sticking to me and it doesn't hold sweat. Um, but I like mine a little bit higher neck. That's just me. Um, but I, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of a gym rat. So I do plan on what I'm going to do there and what I'm the most comfortable in and then make it look a little cute, a little matchy yeah. matchy, you know, yeah, a little matchy matchy. Little matchy, um, matchy. I'm going to need a sample, a free sample of those pants. Of course. Of okay, course. I don't have any. Yeah. Um, we, Jenny and I just, who we have very different figures. Jenny is very narrow through the hip and leg. I'm little in the middle, but I have much back. So Holly I, is Jessica Rabbit and I'm SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just very boxy. My waist is about the same size as my hips. <laughs> but look, that, look, the point is we wear different. We, our needs are different. So yeah. I'm just giving two examples of somebody who is, narrow you know very narrow through the hip and the leg and the butt and then somebody like me got a little waist big butt I will not wear any pants that don't have a waistband like this yeah. that is the uh -huh. only thing that will keep it up for me uh -huh. and my biggest mistake is buying shit at the yoga place uh -huh. thinking oh my god this is so cute I can do yoga in this and then I try to go to the gym in it and yeah. then my boobs are out. Yeah. So that has, I did not realize I could, I did not get the support I needed from the yoga brands that I needed mm -hmm. at, for weightlifting. I don't mm -hmm. do a lot of jumping, but we do do some. And I'm like, why am I wearing this bra? And I tell my trainer, can't do that wearing the wrong bra. Mm -hmm. I always say that, or I'm like jumping like this. It's yeah. so, so stupid. So that is what I have learned. And Jenny, will you tell us the story about when you went to TJ Maxx and bought some leggings? This was years ago and the legs were different to tell us <laughs> that story. <laughs> Yeah. Oh well, God, that was a long time ago. I don't remember exactly. I just remember looking down and they had like a little cutout and I thought they were cute. But when I looked down, the cutout was on the left leg in the back and the right leg was in the front. <laughs> the front. <laughs> so I said, you know, I took a picture. I was like, okay, I don't think I'm going to shop at TJ Maxx anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, you, I mean, you just get what you pay for. Um, you can spend uh, over a hundred dollars on a pair of leggings. You can spend $10. You do kind of get what you pay for. And it's okay to be, you know, at the top, the bottom, or even in the middle. But the most important thing is that you try them on and then you see if you'd like to work out of them. And I have a totally different, like athleisure wear, non-working out stuff too. I mean, I kind of live in it. So I have stuff that I work out in and then I have stuff that, um, you know, like I change into as well after the gym. So, um, just think, you know, I just like to be comfortable, breathable and, you know, things that fit well, if you're comfortable in your outfit, even at the gym, you're going to, I feel like you're going to get a, a little better workout. You just are. I, I do too. And I, you know, we talked about this, your workout clothes. If you listen to last week's episode, we talk about pajamas and lawn, loungewear uh -huh. and it's part of your wardrobe. So if you exercise, even if you exercise once a month, I really yeah. don't care. It's none of my business, mm -hmm. but you should have, you should understand it's not dressing down. It's just changing direction in your wardrobe. You're just right. dressing for a different activity. Right. And I always say you should have house, a house section. You're cleaning the garage, you're washing the dog, you're painting, whatever. That's your house clothes that mm -hmm. no one's going to see you in. Like you should have stuff you can get dirty in, but your workout clothes and your loungewear, like you said, you come home, you're sweaty, you change to another outfit. You're not going out to dinner, but you can run errands yeah. in, in those clothes. Yeah. Let, let's switch gears. So Jenny, are you still a runner or you're not a runner anymore? Um, I am a very minimal runner. I used to run a lot. Now I'm do like very short runs just to get a good sweat in, but not long ones anymore. 
Okay. So what, let's talk about socks and shoes. I know what I like. Let's Mm -hmm. talk about what you like for socks and shoes, cross training, weightlifting, whatever. I would say that's probably the, one of the most popular questions I get, you know, what shoes are those and where do I get them? And the, for me, the most important thing, what I tell my clients and participants is try, go to a store where they can like, first of all, they know what they're talking about. So mm-hmm. like Fleet Feet or a running store. I mean, y'all, these stores now have like computerized things where you put your feet on and it can see what type of foot shape you have. If you have a high arch or a flat foot, you can also tell them if you're battling different things like Achilles tendonitis or lower back pain or, you know, and they can really help with that. So go, first of all, always go to a store that I just wouldn't recommend a store that you're, you know, you're pulling the shoes off yourself and you're Dicks. just, you know? <laughs> I didn't know what kind of, uh, what you, what, DSW, you DSW. Yeah, okay. All right. You said it, not me, but, um, go to that, those places too. I personally, um, well, I have so many things on shoes that I could talk about. For me, the most important thing is that you have a different shoe for different activities. And I know that sounds over the top, but I want you to think of it as like a very small investment. I mean, if you're going to pay this to take a Pilates class, I mean, take three of those Pilates classes and you have a new pair of shoes. Think of your shoes as a very small investment. So if you are doing fitness, fitness classes, weight training, walk around the gym, get you a nice cross trainer. They have a lot of stability, especially in the heel. So it's made for fitness classes where you're like stepping to the side and moving to the side. Um, and I, I bat a little bit with Achilles tendonitis. So I look for a, something that has a little bit more cushion on the heel part. Um, if you are, then I recommend a shoe if you like to walk or run. Um, I personally walk every morning. And so I put on my running shoe. This running shoe only sees the outside. It only sees the pavement. And you're just going to get a lot more wear out of it if you really treat your shoes as part of your workout equipment, uh, you know. And then, um, and then I have like a shoe that I change into after I work out to run my errands. So I know that sounds crazy and I change mine out very, very often, but the most important thing is that you look on the bottom of your shoe and see if they look smooth. Um, If they starting to look smooth, uh, it is time to get a new pair. I mean, I really recommend depending on how much you work out, but definitely at least every six months. Hot tip, hot tip, hot tip. Yeah, change them out. It's going to feel so much better. If you feel any sort of burning kind of sensation on the bottom of your foot, <laughs> <It's not good. laughs> we don't want any burning, but that usually means it's thinning out. It's getting yeah. too smooth. You need a new pair. And so you'll see me changing shoes all the time. Um, I, I, I like to put on my, I like to even put on my fitness shoes after I get to the gym. Um, but that's, that's just part of my life, my job, but I definitely recommend good store, good fitting. And then I really recommend, this is the PT coming out in me, but a really good insole. So take the insoles out that comes with a shoe and get you a pair of custom orthotics. You may say, well, I'm not an old lady. I don't need orthotics, but it is just an insole. I I should show you my, it's just an insole that is shaped exactly to your foot. They do a 3d image. All right. You can go get it. Go get it. Really? Okay. All right. I'll keep talking. Um, that's all great advice. That is really, really super helpful because a lot of people have a hard time figuring out what shoes are best for them until something happens. So that's a really good point. John, let's have a sweeper here. Okay, go ahead, Jenny. Okay, so I change my shoes out all the time. Um, So these are probably just, (laughs) these are probably less than a month old. Um, And I'm not loyal to any brand. I personally- I'm not either. I'm not either. I I think it's good to change them out. Me too, I do too. 
I think your feet need this, um, but I, I've worn New Balances, Saucony's. I, I don't I don't love the on clouds. That's just me. Um, and Nikes don't fit me well, but I have a high arch, so I know which ones fit me. But you basically take your insoles out. And then, I mean, this, like I got sand in it because I'm- So those are custom? These are custom, but look at them. They're not nice. like they are. Um, you know, 10 years ago, they were hard. Yes, yes, yes. So it looks like nothing- but this is a this is the shape of my foot. So I take these out after my walk and I shove them right into my fitness shoes. And if you have feet problem, for sure, go to a podiatrist and get you some. Um, I have just a, I'm on my feet teaching on so many different like floors that are not great. Like yeah. I, do, I do like the water ropes on the tile, which is not good. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, this eliminates some heel pain and so they're just they're not cheap but they will last you how long do they last well at these i've had these for um it's a great question i haven't replaced mine yet but these are only about six months old so next question yeah do you do they from a stylistic point of view you've got fashion sneakers you've got fitness sneakers you've got running shoes cross trainers no 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 do they make your shoes, when you put the inserts in, do they make them too tight? No, because you're taking the insoles that are already in there out. Oh. Yeah. So it, no, it. in fact, it should feel really good, but you really okay. need to go up on your size of your shoe anyway. What size are you wearing now? Oh my God. Don't ask. <laughs> well, so I'm a solid seven and a half in like my flip flops and my And like cute sandals. How and so, if it's any kind of close to a shoe, it's an eight. Now yeah. don't don't fall off your chair, but you need to go up a full size in your running shoes. So my running shoes are nines. I know Holly and I used to be sixes. She has the tiniest feet. They never. I, do, I wear. It's funny because I'm going to be fifty this year. John, let's get a um a scary sound here, like a <laughs> e e e e sound. Um, my foot has really grown. So I am definitely a seven, sometimes a seven and a half. And I'm starting to think my tennis shoes are too small. Yeah. If, if they are starting to go numb, your feet go numb a little bit. It's just, I don't do the ellipt. My feet would only go numb on the elliptical. So I stopped yeah. doing that. Now my feet are at the end and I'm like, okay, my shoes are too small. Yeah. But my, well, but so, so with running shoes, we, it's the forward motion yes. and it needs to move a little bit, not so much with cross trainers, but for sure running or walking your feet go forward because of the forward motion. So you really need to go up at least a size. And your and then, shoes are not too big at a nine when no. you wear in a heel, you wear an eight. No, not, crazy. not in a running shoe. So these are, um, so confused. I know. And so, the, well, these are eight and a half, but, and my fitness shoes are usually right at eights, but I have worn a nine running shoe and just y'all, every shoe is different. I know every shoe is different. And so don't, it's just like probably what you tell your yeah, with clothes. Right? Yeah. yeah. So you really do need to try them on and y'all take, they will get, um, find the return policy. Most all of them will say, try them out, go for a walk outside, take oh, yeah. them to the gym and then I've definitely taken a back. I always keep the box, you know, on handy and, and just going to try them out. They will always return. Well, so far they have always returned. Especially if you go to a nice fleet fee here, it's called yeah, Fidipides, yeah, Peach yeah. Running in Georgia, whatever. They will, all those running stores will take them back. You, you're asking us to Walmart, Dick's, whatever. I mean, you probably can't take them back, but they are, it, their tr staff is not trained the way that the professional runners yeah. Um, but just I do sure want to, they're not too tight. Yeah. Yes. Just, you wanted to talk about socks. I mean, that's a personal preference. I do buy the nice socks. So I, I like the Belegas and the Bombas. Yeah. They're, I just like the thicker socks. Um, and so I, I have a ton of those and I just, I buy them at the fleet feet as well. Okay. Um, I just, yeah. my thing is I don't really know when to let the socks go because yeah. I am exercising so much. I'm like, these are gross. Like, yeah, yeah. And I, then I have a drawer full of socks, but I just need to donate them. Um, yeah. I'm not running, so I don't go through them as quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, if anything, I'm cycling and walking outside, but I do want to say for all, anybody who's weightlifting out there, 
This is my go-to, these Metacons. I don't know if you have seen these, Jenny. They're completely flat. Yeah. If you go to a beefcake gym, I, I go to a beefcake gym, everyone is in Converse or Vans. And uh-huh. it's because they're flat. Mm-hmm. And I don't like really flat shoes like that because it hurts my back. I need a little bit of a thing. But these Metacons, I'm I'm telling you, these are great, Jenny. Awesome. If you ever, so yeah. they're no, really I've good. never tried those on. And they are like wearing Converse, but Mm -hmm. I just think they're cuter than whatever. Could I get on the treadmill and walk in these? Yeah, I probably shouldn't, Mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't really do a ton of cardio anymore. So this Mm -hmm. is what helps me. I do have the Sukanis. I do have the, um, the Nikes, whatever Nikes I have, but again, all of my shoes are getting too small and Mm -hmm. I need to to de- demote them is which is what I talked about last week to the dog walking closet because I can uh, walk around the block and them I don't care. I have a whole demoting system. It goes to my yard work shoes. Yes. <laughs> and then the yard work shoes just, you know, um most and actually most of these um stores like Fleet Feet, there's a box in there for old shoes. And oh, I love that. Okay, yeah, yeah, they'll donate them for you because they're they're nice shoes. And then a lot of mine are like three, four months old. Hello. Um, <laughs> but you know, again, you get what you pay for, just go ahead and invest in a good pair good pair of socks well fitted and 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 buy and buy multiple pairs of you know for different activities and, and let's be honest the slouchy socks are back in not for our age group but I have seen them but yeah. I do I do wear the ankle I don't wear anything above the ankle yeah that's, me neither. that's just me but, but in the 90s I had the high top <laughs> box with the two straps and then massive scratch Jeez. I mean, you couldn't see my calf muscle at all. I mean, like, remember when we used middle. to change the shoelaces to like Coca-Cola uh, shoelaces? Like that was the shit. I mean, dang. I mean, we used to get neon. Yeah. Remember the fat laces? Yeah. We used to change our shoelaces. Like that was, uh, that was uh, a mate. Like to do that was great. Um, anyway, John, let's have a sweeper here. Okay. I do want to talk about hot and cold. So we've okay. talked about, let's talk about when it's really cold outside. Do you have any fabrics that you recommend or air, like cold weather workout clothes that you can tell us about? For like working out outside, you mean? Or yeah, when it's really cold or even just going to the gym in the winter. I mean, going in the gym in the winter, I'm still wearing the same stuff. You're wearing shorts. Um, sometimes I have a pair of really big baggy pants that I love and that does go over my shorts, but no, I do typically wear leggings more in the winter and I'll even wear my, my little zipper joggers over my leggings, like to get to the gym. Um, but as far as tops, that's all the same. Um, it's just, you know, I, I typically don't do a whole lot outside in the winter when it's like really cold, but it is all about layers. And I mean, you do want some breathable fabrics, um, I just usually, I don't look at the, I don't look at the fabrics, you know, what I don't look at the tag and see exactly what I'm buying. I just like the feel of it. You know, I don't want anything real cottony heavy. And I just usually want something like a polyester, some spandex for sure in there, some rayon, but um, it's all about layers um, for me and then being able to, to take them off. But um, I'm, I'm definitely a legging person kind of year round and then joggers over shorts and being able to take them off when I need to, but in the gym, I, I did wouldn't be able to tell what season it is for me. I did buy a pair of bike shorts, like our seventh grade bike shorts. I, I wear them around the house because they are comfortable. I wouldn't be caught dead in the casket in those in the gym. I mean, w- and, would and not. those, um, those are back in style and I have a lot of pair and I, I do like them. Do you work uh, out in them? I do. I typically teach my aqua classes and I tell Bastard. you right. It's so hot in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. I'm above the people and I started getting smiles from the guys like, "Ah," you know, and I'm like, oh, I think they can see up my shorts. So and now I wear biker shorts when I teach my aqua classes and I do like them. They ride up a little bit, but um, the, you know, my legs are the one thing I I do like on my body. So I, I, I you can, yeah, you look good in that. You're, you look good in this. You you won't catch me without a shirt over my sports bra. Like I don't yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I like to show my stomach. So you, it, again, it's what you feel comfortable in. And I do like my biker shorts. <laughs> God, I have one pair. I called my son's fiance. I was like, I did it. I did it. She's like, you did what? <laughs> I said, I bought some biker shorts. Am I too old? Am I too old? She's like, Holly, no. I was like, I know, but no, 
no one has seen me in them in public. I'm just saying, I don't, I'm not super comfortable, but they are comfortable. I do wear, I mean, I'll run errands and I'm whatever, but that's, but that's it. Um, okay. What projects are we, are you working on Jenny? Are you going to have your own fitness network? Are we going to be reading about you in USA Today under the lifestyle section? I'm confused. I mean, maybe. Let's <laughs> see. Look, I mean, I what I'm doing now is is perfect for me. It's it's everything I've always wanted within the fitness, you know, area. Like being able to connect with people, talk to them bring people together. I guess it's leading more towards, I'm starting to do more fitness retreats where I'm bringing my viewers together. You know, yes, they want to meet me, but like they are so excited to be meeting each other because they all have something in common. Mm -hmm. And so I'm doing a lot more planning retreats. Um, I really want to expand more. I really want to reach out more to um, beginners First, you know, I love my older generation and my channel has always said from the beginning, active seniors and beginners, but I just pull 65 year olds. I don't know what it is about me. <laughs> that is my, that is what I pull. I would love to reach people who are scared to go to the gym, who've never worked out before, who, you know, as a physical therapist, I know how to deal with people with you know, more serious problems like obesity and pregnancies. And so that was what I used to do a lot with physical therapy. And I wouldn't mind shooting my YouTube, you know, a little bit wider to get, to get to that population. But look, life is good. Life is good. And it's nice to be able to turn on a computer and teach and reach, you know, thousands of people that way. It's just crazy. I think it's so intimidating if you're not wired that way mm-hmm. to work out, you it is really hard to start. Yeah. Not only is it hard to start, it's hard to st- to make it into a lifestyle. Sure. And you know, when you find somebody you really connect with, such as yourself, it makes it's then it's I don't want to say it's easy, but it's easier because mm-hmm. the way you break it down, the way you make it not scary, you don't want to do this, then do that. Do yeah. you know, but, but I always say, and I've had a lot of trainers in my life and I've never had a trainer. I didn't like, I just prefer some, you know, mm-hmm. more than others because I ain't going to work out unless I have a trainer. Yeah. Sorry. I, I can't, can I do it by myself? Sure. I don't want to. Could yeah. I clean my house by myself? Sure. Not going to happen. Like mm-hmm. I'm going to have somebody help me. So when somebody breaks it down in the way that you do, it makes it less intimidating. So I'm very grateful for what you do because I think it can really speak volumes to people who don't understand that it's it, anybody can do it on any mm-hmm. level. And mm-hmm. that's what's great about your channel. Yes, you have an, a, an aging population, but it's not just that. It can be for anybody. Um yeah. You know, what is a truth bomb or a mantra that you can leave us with? Mine is your style must evolve with your age or you get stuck in a style rut. Do you have a fitness mantra that you live by or Ooh, that yeah. tell your well, people like, like the, what lady from Peloton, she's like, they can always knock you down, but they can never knock you out. Yeah. Like, I love that. Yeah. I, love- I mean, it's funny you ask, cause I do have a lot of things, but One I always ask a client is when have you ever regretted a workout? When have you ever completed the workout? I said, God, I wish I hadn't have done that. Right. I mean, never, 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 never. Never. So when you're trying to find that motivation of working out, you know, go ahead, get dressed in the morning, get it over with. The hardest part is arriving, showing up. I and agree I'm with you. Ma- I'm trying to make it easy for people that you just have to turn the computer yeah. off, but you still have to do it, right? And so I just always remind them of how they feel after the workout. And I always say that you're never too old to start anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you have to make a change in order to see or feel a change, no matter what size you are, what level you are, no matter what age you are. And always remember that five minutes is better than no minutes, okay? Even That's a good a, mantra. Any, just a tiny bit is better than nothing. 
And then it just tends to kind of stick with people and they start to feel the benefits of working out. And then it's something that they stick with. So I have a lot of cliches, but those are the ones I tend to go to. I I love that. And I, I really support what you do, not just because you're my bestie, but just because I really believe in what you're doing. And we love here at the Fashion Crimes Podcast to support women owned businesses and women owned entrepreneurs because Mm -hmm. women supporting women, that is my jam. So anything that we can do to support you, you know, we certainly love the Jenny Fitzgerald t-shirts. We love those. I've got one. It's around here somewhere. I should have been wearing it. Sorry. Um, we love that. We will certainly try, you know, your leggings. If you send me a sample, I will, you know, wear it, style it, whatever. Yeah. Um, because people ask me, hey, what do you think about this? You know, people are big into brands. What about this brand, this brand, this brand? And because every, every company and every factory and, and the sizing is so different, it really just depends on your body and what will stay up on your hips That's and, right. you know, and what is comfortable to you. I mean, it's all subjective. Style is subjective, but just start. Exercise is like st- st- style. Just mm-hmm. start, pick one thing, get new jeans, get new workout clothes, get the right tennis shoes, get the right sports bra. We could talk about bras all day long. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I will say just because you're double negative A doesn't excuse you from getting the right sports bra or the right bra. Right. So good advice on that. And again, it's whatever style you like, and that will hold them in. I certainly know what doesn't work because God knows I've worn that enough to the gym. Let's yeah. figure out what do- what does work and stick to that. And, yeah. you know, work out one day a week or for five minutes or try Jenny Fit Start if you haven't exercised before, or if maybe you exercised 20 years ago and you're like, damn, it's been a minute. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let me get back into this. You know, you're not going to be benching whatever weight you have to start from the beginning. So Jenny Fit Start is a great place to start. Plug your YouTube. It's YouTube slash Jenny Fit Start. Is that right? Well, I mean, if you, if you just go to my website, uh, which oh, yeah. is- Jenny fit, everything is Jenny fit start. So everything's the exact same, but if you go to my website, um, it's pretty just detailed there and you can get on my YouTube, which is Jenny fit start from there. You can get on Instagram, Jenny fit start, Facebook, Jenny fit start. Um, but if you click the tab active wear, I have, um, my top 10 picks of what I recommend for wearing. And it has those light and tight compression leggings I talked about. And my favorite bra, which is called a bomber bra, but there's also eight other options. Um, so that's on there and you can order it right from there. I have equipment you can order right from, everything's on there. So um, just Google Jenny Fit Start, I'll come right up and uh, you can just go from there. It'll be y'all in the show notes too, but loving that journey for us that you mm-hmm. have a, a list. Yes, great. everything. I try to make everything as easy as possible. <laughs> I, I don't blame for, you for my audience. Yeah. I, just, yeah. <laughs> I, I look, I don't blame you. I, you know, I think it's great what you're doing. We support what you're doing. Thank you so much for enlightening us and sharing your wisdom and giving us, you know, the truth about what works for you, what works for you is not going to work for everybody, but it's a good starting point. And, you know, Jenny does have these retreats where you can go and then you can be with her on vacay. Um, That can make your life better. I mean, I don't know how your day can get any better. I've been trying to get Marilyn to go on these fitness retreats. I'm like, God, please go, go. Um, but But anyway, I'm like, I'm like you, Holly, I do like to hear from my, my listeners, my viewers. So, um, yeah, my emails on there, it doesn't bother me when people ask anything about whether it's active wear or equipment or, you know, whatever. So just, I mean, I'm happy to respond. It makes, it's part of my job. I love it. I like to say I'm very available. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm very let me check my Let schedule. Me check your schedule. Yep. All clear. Yep, all clear. <laughs> Y'all send me, my listeners are so sweet. They're like, I can't believe you wrote me back. I'm like, it's what else am I going to do? Come on now. Of course I'm going to write you back. So it's I the love that. Of the job. <laughs> I mean, and I love hearing from people join our email list, sign up for Jenny's newsletter, sign up for my newsletter, hit us up, send us snail mail. Jenny will come back. I, again, I got to be a guest star on one of her videos and I was like, um, this shit is not that easy. Okay. Um, I was, I was like, really? We're got 10 more. Okay. Like it was was awesome. It was so fun. And And so so (laughs) we are going to plug the video in my newsletter. 
um, as well. So you guys can just see what she does. And if you have aging parents or siblings or anything like that, or if you yourself, it's a great place to start. We're going to do some more, you know, collabing, whatever. Jenny's been great. She had me. I have had her. Now we're, what the sky's the limit. I like to say the Holly and Jenny show, but you know, Jonathan's yeah. like, reel it in, reel it in. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, thank you for letting me be a part of this. You know, I am so proud of you for this podcast. It is great Amazing. and it thank is you. very successful and I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Jenny's like, do you like this? Do you like this? What about this? Is that cute? Can I put you? Jenny's like, why are all the cutouts in the middle? Can you not, can you move the cutouts? Like, I don't want this part of my stomach showing. I'm I mean, like, like anywhere, but exactly where it is on the love handles anywhere, but there. It's like, why are there holes in every dress I see? Why? I'm like, I understand. Okay. We have been way over time. Y'all, thank you so much for listening this week. Jenny Fitzstart, BFD in the house. Check her out on YouTube, social media, all the places, TikTok. You know, we're, we're going to do a, a slideshow again, the same slideshow of us <laughs> recreating all of our sixth and seventh grade pictures. Lucky don't you. Know how, don't know how your day can get any better. I am the hostess with the mostest, your favorite personal stylist, and as always, the only Holly you need to know. This has been the Fashion Crimes Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Y'all have a fabulous, fashionable week. Bye. Bye.